This special anti-sugar brownie drops my blood glucose. And it doesn't just raise it and then drop it because I'm on some insulin roller coaster. It just drops it straight down. In fact, this anti-sugar brownie also lowers my insulin, vacuuming away glucose as if into some metabolic magic black hole. But as much as I may look like Harry Potter, and I get that a lot, this isn't magic school, it's not Hogwarts, it's science class. And I'm gonna explain to you how this brownie can indeed drop my blood sugar using science and how you can track this effect in yourself if you want to, because you don't just need to take my word for it, the proof is in the metabolic pudding, i.e. your blood. Now, the special ingredient in this brownie that packs the main anti-sugar punch is the rare sugar allulose. But before I get to talking about the data and science around allulose, I want to situate that story in the context of other sweet molecules, examples of which are the artificial sweeteners like sucralose and aspartame, which personally I refuse to consume in any appreciable quantity. And here are two quick examples as to why, starting with sucralose. Sucralose has been shown in a landmark human randomized controlled trial to promote insulin resistance and concurrently change brain activity in the dopamine reward networks of the brain, even when consumed at low or moderate doses in the context of mixed macronutrient intake. And the effects are profound, so profound in fact, that in one substudy in teenagers, it was prematurely terminated because of such a massive jump in HOMA IR insulin resistance score. For more on the nuances of this particular study, I want you to check out this video. But moving on, aspartame. Aspartame is another problem child in the metabolism story. One of the most fascinating studies to me on aspartame showed that aspartame dosed at the mouse equivalent, this was a mouse study, but the mouse equivalent of just two to four Diet Cokes per day, not only caused anxiety in the mice, but also led to transgenerational inheritance of the anxiety phenotype for up to two Two generations. So in the children and the grandchildren of these mice, even though the children and grandchildren of the mice hadn't been exposed to aspartame themselves. Now, there are also human data on aspartame and anxiety and irritability and mood changes. These are interesting and compelling, but I think this transgenerational anxiety phenomenon is particularly thought-provoking. Not only does it give one pause to think about the metabolic consequences of some quote considered safe ingredients, but it does so framed by the reality that these are data we will never have in humans. So we need to each ask ourselves, what is our risk tolerance for say, drinking a Diet Coke? Do we really need it or do we want to have something else? I could go on, but I think you get the point. Be it negatively impacting insulin resistance or the microbiome or mental health. I'm personally someone who is very skeptical and cautious when it comes to sweeteners and sweet molecules, but I'm also open to new data in evaluating different molecules individually and contextually. And throughout my studies, allulose has stood out among all the other sweet molecules in the metabolic universe that I've been exposed to as not only neutral, but potentially beneficial for metabolism. For example, in this other human randomized trial, allulose caused no increase in glucose or insulin. And when allulose was combined with regular sugar, it attenuated, it lowered the glycemic and insulin responses to normal sugar. Thus, it's not just sugar neutral, but an anti-sugar, hence the title of this video. The mechanisms by which allulose exerts its anti-sugar and anti-obesity effects aren't entirely clear to date. One mechanism by which it might do so is by increasing production of the body's own GLP-1 hormone both acutely and chronically. It's known that allulose can stimulate GLP-1 production. And of course, that GLP-1 is an anti-obesity hormone. The metabolic inspiration for this generation of blockbuster weight loss drugs that's changing the obesity medicine game. That said, I will caveat no food, not even allulose, will raise GLP-1s to the supra-physiologic dose equivalents that are produced by pharma-grade drugs. However, that doesn't mean it can't have a benefit effect, given that when the body 
body produces its own hormones naturally as induced by allulose, they are processed differently than say when the hormones injected. That's a whole other kettle of fish story, but it could be that allulose acts through GLP-1 to have its metabolic effects, or that these are true, true, and unrelated phenomena. Furthermore, there may be effects of allulose on the microbiome, in particular gut bugs, that harm GLP-1 producing cells in the intestines, which leads to the GLP-1 hormonal deficit we see in insulin resistance disorders like obesity, metabolic syndrome, or PCOS. And for more on this phenomenon, check out this other video. The potential role of allulose here is an area of active investigation, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Also, allulose has been shown to act on fat cells to activate an enzyme that liberates fat, especially in the fasted state when insulin is low. And in a head-to-head -head comparison between stevia and allulose in mice, stevia did not, but allulose did protect against Western diet-induced obesity. Granted, these are mice and mice aren't humans, but while multi-million dollar human randomized control trials are outstanding, data like these, framed by clear biological plausibility and accumulating anecdotes of people claiming that allulose crushes their hunger and cravings and has helped them on their weight loss journeys, well, you combine all those things and I'm compelled. In fact, I'm compelled enough by the literature on allulose to have joined the scientific advisory board at Rx Sugar, an allulose company. But before you roll your eyes and moan because you think this is just some promotional video, consider this possibility, which is in fact reality. I did not join the advisory board because I wanted to make a buck. There are a lot of career paths, trust me, more lucrative than the MD PhD track that's consumed the greater part of the last decade of my life in nearly all my 20s. Clearly, if you've gotten to know me through this channel or elsewhere on social media, what drives me primarily is curiosity and science. And when there is interesting metabolic science at my fingertips, well, that's more enticing than any brownie ever could be. What's more, the company, Rx Sugar, has a great team of scientists I love to work with. Professor Dom D'Agostino, Ben Bickman, Richard Johnson, Andrew Kutnick, and the company is willing to invest in our ideas. Perhaps, if they think we're clever, and I assume they do, since they brought us onto the scientific advisory board, chasing our ideas in the form of scientific studies could prove financially beneficial for the company. There's no reason to obscure that fact. But that's not a bad thing. In fact, provided our ideas are targeted at demystifying the black box that is human metabolism, and for the betterment of our collective understanding of metabolism, I'd argue that having a company with their incentive structure aligned with metabolic health is a great thing, right? Setting aside your potential negative visceral reaction to product placement, isn't that just logical? And frankly, if you don't need sweet in your life, then great, you're actually like me. I don't need sweet in my life, and I don't need allulose. I just find it interesting. But if you are someone who wants sweet in your life, or maybe even more importantly or more compellingly, you have had a great metabolic health journey and you have a loved one who you wish would take a step towards reducing sugar in their diet to improve their metabolic health, and you're looking for a foot in the metabolic health door for this person, an anti-sugar brownie is a pretty great starting point. And it's also super convenient. Convenience is important because all you have to do is add water and microwave it. And if you do, in fact, want to try this brownie, you can use the discount code NICK20 and get 20% off. To be clear, I do not get any revenue from these sales. Sales. I can say the word sales. This is a friends and family discount. All I want from you is an open mind and curiosity. But if this is a tool that you or a loved one can use, then great. And I also said I'd offer you a way to see if it drops your glucose in yourself. I'm also a new affiliate, a lot of product placement here, of Levels Health, a company that provides CGMs and a platform to interpret the data. And you can check out my affiliate link below in the description if you want to get two free months on an annual membership. I love and happily promote continuous glucose monitors because I think they're an amazing tool for biofeedback and promoting positive behaviors. And I'll also link you to more information on that below. But in summary, here is my bottom line. I'd love if we lived in a metabolic utopia where everyone ate delicious whole foods and a whole food carbohydrate appropriate diet, exercise, slept well every night, and was overall happy and healthy. Doesn't that sound nice? Well, that's not a reality at least not one that's coming anytime soon. So being pragmatic, we need all the techniques 
and optional tools at our disposal to fight the metabolic disease epidemic. And if an anti-sugar brownie, potentially paired with the continuous glucose monitor, is extra weaponry, well, I welcome it into our metabolic health army.